Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the second episode of Clay Dialogues, presented by Alchemist Marketing Solutions and its real estate division, Clay. My name is Manish Korwal. Some of you may know me from the last episode and before. And besides being the managing director at Alchemist, I'm also your host for this e-talk show series, where we shall have close encounters with the real world heroes of the real estate industry. As I said the last time, they say heroes remain heroes only till you cannot touch them in flesh and blood. So we're bringing your work-life heroes as close as possible to you through the new world child of the media industry, the digital media. This way, we bring them up close and yet you are actually shying away from maybe hugging them or holding their hand. So please give us an hour or so today and each Saturday at 4 p.m. And we shall be glad to hear stories and answer them and I get answers from these icons that otherwise on their busy days, they would not be able to give. For the initial few times, if you happen to miss the episode, as you may have done today, you can watch the archive on our Facebook page, which will be in a chat box in a minute or so. But we would recommend live watching as there's nothing close to that. Add to the live watching experience the fact that you can actually ask questions directly to your favorite guest that you're attending the show off. Uh, is it is it is it good if they if if we like those questions we'll pose it to them and if they like those questions they'll answer it for you fair deal i think for now i'll ask to introduce the hero of this episode to you mr sanjay dat a man who shares his name with another hero a man who has 26 years of real estate experience a number which maybe some of you haven't clocked in terms of age as yet he runs the most trusted real estate company of this country and that who gives homes and happiness to people across the country and abroad. He has worn various hats, that of an entrepreneur, a leader in MNC, a captain of a large Indian ship as he is today, and he never gets tired. When he's at work, he's building homes. And when he's at home, he's probably designing jewelry. Yes, his wife's Mangal Sutra has been designed by him. Now, can you believe it? And if you can, can you actually replicate it? Yes, not. At 54, he's getting younger and rediscovering himself. So let's get to rediscover and discover him as well. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you the man, the leader, the artist, the biker, the professional, the entrepreneur, Sanjay Dutt, MD CEO at Tata Reality and Infrastructure Limited. Let's have the video, please. Please welcome our guest for the evening, Mr. Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay, how are you doing? Excellent. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Emmett, for being here and sharing your life and episodes of your life with us in this episode. Well, um, Sanjay, if all is well, let's begin with our first segment. Yes, sure. Okay, let me introduce first the segments to you. Actually, they have, we have five of them. Okay. The first one, as it's called, is Shop Talk. So we're going to talk business with you in that segment. We don't talk what your, your, your work sphere has been. So that's the first one for you. The second one will be about you, and that's called You Talk. It's more mm -hmm. about you as a person. The third one is about friends and family and your connections with them. The fourth one will go to the audience. Until then, I'm requesting all the audience to type in their questions as you may have for Sanjay. And the best ones will be picked up by Farhan, who's the CEO of Clay, and uh, told to you. The fifth one is where we'll end, which is a rapid cross positions, but nothing but a rapid fire round. Sanjay, let's see how truthful you are to us on that one. Looking forward to it. Fantastic game. So Sanjay, let's begin our, our first segment of the day, Shop Talk. We want to discuss a lot of work with you, but of course, what we'll mix with is who you are as a leader and a person. So let's, oh. let's begin with a little somber note, if I may say so. Uh, let's begin with what's happening today. 
with all that is that is happening and a huge problem at the demand and supply and both going dry how's your company and you navigating the issues first of all uh, manish is very important to get this message across everybody that real estate is not only about residential real estate right. it is for residential between residential affordable luxury premier and of course in commercial corporate office itscz it park and then we have warehousing logistic uh, senior living co living and co working so it's a very broad framework uh, to convey to everybody almost all segments were growing in real estate mm-hmm. it was only the mid segment of residential which had excessive supply and too much inventory right. and perhaps too many projects stuck which caused a lot of heartburn and stress to the sector and there were four stages when the real estate sector particularly the residential went through a very difficult period over last 10 years the four uh, stages started with first the challenges created by the developers themselves okay excessive speculation by the developers by the buyers even the home buyers were speculating manish then came the industry uh, everybody wanted to be a pan india everybody wanted to grow and scale then came the private equity which fueled growth and then came the challenges uh, of you know the less of real estate but more of capital markets right. so it was not real estate market it was liquidity it was exposures of nbfcs banks uh, and they had given very expensive debt to the sector which was not sustainable then came the regulatory aspect which disrupted the real world so you can just the way we say before christ and after christ you can say before era and after era manish right so that Good really course. disrupted everything and just when we were beginning to stabilize real estate business in the new order of the world which was regulated in the larger instead of public and with, and very rightly so suddenly the covid 19 situation appeared and that actually uh you know the fourth bottom of the real estate sector that we discovered but simultaneously manish last year in 2019 india recorded the highest office leasing of 47 million square feet sure. it never happened before uh, warehousing and logistics also grew exponentially however 2020 and 21 will be subdued corporates are gauging their losses covid impact and every aspect of business is nearly frozen no expansion no capex wait and watch let the storm pass by and let let us assess the situation and then take a call so we are now going through a very difficult period of discovering this fourth bottom the only way to go come out of this is to remain focused mm-hmm. conserve cash monetize inventory make sure you cut down your exposure debt in whichever way in the quickest way that you can even if you need to take some bit of you know hit on valuations or prices and be prudent in your approach and nimble footed create a very agile organization which is very lean to able to navigate through this difficult time actually sanjay a lot of what you're saying is actually true for mid or small level organizations as well so what happens yes. with startups i mean are you also following this or or let's say if, if if you were cash rich which i believe you you know you as a corporate are would you not spend this money time into acquisitions sourcing rather than trying to navigate your way through the demand and supply mm-hmm. issues golden principle of business not just real estate is to be very very conservative okay these are very capital intensive businesses sure uh, let's take commercial you buy land you get so that takes about a year you right. get approvals that takes about 2 years you construct that takes 3 years so you know 6 years gone so if you invested 
that equity is already 200 gone into the business and then comes the first rent after getting occupancy certificate right so with this capex heavy business you need to be very careful uh, there is no harm if you are missing out on some opportunities because okay. opportunities will always be plenty you know four, 3 years ago 2 years ago tata could have said the same thing and in boardroom discussions do happen that there is a consolidation in the industry right maybe it's an opportunity for corporate developers to scale right take advantage of softer valuations of land and projects sure but we did not do that and today it is becoming even softer okay so it is always prudent to do a little bit of wait and watch and then manish the other thing is covid 19 nobody knows it's a unknown we thought it will be okay in 21 days yeah now we know 2020 is gone okay right so even if we recover uh, and and flatten the curve as they call it business balance sheets will take some time to return so sure. it's not going to happen overnight so i would still be conservative so basically what i'm hearing is what probably took was supposed to take 21 days according to you is now going to get solved as if at all in 2021 strong signal there um, yeah. uh, sanjay so you know let me turn the discussion a little little more towards uh, the humane side of it we hear tata group doing so much around people at times of adversity including this one uh, what in particular is your company and i'm talking about tata realty infra what is it doing right now towards providing whatever it can um, to relief for towards relief uh, one second how is it leading the market i mean you are you are the first corporate citizen if i may uh, say so mm -hmm. in this industry how are you leading this to the government to others what should they gain out of it the core values of the group hmm. are embedded in every entity and business manish okay empathy transparency governance integrity they really matter first of all in tata group there is no differentiation uh, whether you are an employee customer or a vendor you are people and i think the view of the management including tata housing Tata Realty and Infrastructure has been that. Uh, so we've actually uh, been doing a lot of activities, whether they are CSR, whether they are looking after construction workers, or indeed being careful, cautious about our own employees, their safety during this difficult time of COVID. Okay. That is the DNA of the firm, sure. which comes from the corporate uh, core values of Tata Sons uh, for us. And, and our job is to ensure that we preserve those values and we implement it to the team. Uh, as an as a organization, uh, we have always thought good of the industry. So as the co-chair for FICI Real Estate Committee, whether as a chairman for RICS in India or part of SHM and Naretko and Kridai, I've always done my bit to take the causes to the government, to the stakeholders, that how we can make a better regulatory environment, how we can make a better place for our workers, how can we ensure that our customers' interest is protected, how do we ensure that we are able to bring back the economy and we as a developer community contribute to the economy? How can we ensure? So all our 20 construction sites, Manish, mm. we have six million square feet of income generating office portfolio. We get rental income from there across mm -hmm. the country, okay. key cities. Then we have close to about six million square feet under construction, including a service apartment to be managed by Taj, uh, over 100 key in Chennai. Mm -hmm. All sites have gone live. We have not waited. We want to make sure that we deliver our projects on time even though the force majeure has given us more time, we were going ahead and finishing fast, hand over possession to the customers as early as possible and make sure that we uh, bring cash early and pay our vendors uh, and therefore maintain that healthy cycle of a business. 
in short how can we contribute to make business more normal which i think at this moment is the most important thing for us to do so sanjay you are a captain of not just tata maybe you you are one of the captains that we all look up to when it comes to our representation as an industry to the government to the bureaucracy etc do you think we are getting support enough during these times or or are we just are we just I some think government, for, the, for the government so manish very quickly uh, i'm glad you asked the question the current government from the first interim budget mm -hmm. when they came to power at center mm -hmm. till the last budget not single budget has gone without reforms in the real estate sector okay they relaxed the fdi norms they introduced atib tax benefit for developers and customers the interest subvention schemes real estate regulation act and just before they came there was a land act for example if you remember yes foreign direct investment there were lot of restrictions they opened those restrictions now manish you also know that india has now opened reit market real estate investment trust which is now right now we have one real estate reit which is doing extremely well so all these reforms convey that the government is listening the question is that all this reforms bundled up with regulatory reforms with good intent ibc code for example insolvency right. bank act all those are well meaning for the society and business that has disrupted the world now for last 10 years the developers were struggling with excessive inventory and development already and therefore suddenly there were burst of regulatory reforms so you know what it does it disrupts the business you need to stabilize your business in a new environment and every time they did something new came up every time they did something it disrupted so we needed a period to stabilize the business so that we can align ourselves to the business environment so that's one aspect so the government's intention of change has been very positive i think there are many reforms on taxation side that the government has not addressed manish mm -hmm. and they should why should you and me when we are investing in mutual funds and we can buy as much as you want our charged capital gain for buying a second home mm -hmm. why should you know if i my parents are living in one of my other apartment why should i be paying a tax on a notional rent because i'm not going to collect rent for my father right why should i be penalized as a tax paying citizen and willing to invest in real estate so government has to think through why should they charge 28% gst on cement why should input credit on commercial development should not be given so why should joint development agreements should attract gst tax uh, you know when you have consolidation in the real estate sector you should allow tier 1 developers and tier 2 and tier 3 developers to work together idea and vodafone are now together even jio has taken facebook investment mm. there is a consolidation across sectors and now if the joint development agreement has to be signed between two developers you are putting gst on jda there is absolutely no need right so there are a lot of uh, taxation reforms one second is you need to unlock and this message is manish for state governments not sure. the central government the state governments have to ask this question have they done enough to ensure the real estate developer or real estate development industry bounces back two years of approval process i was told that chatisgarh is the only state in the country which is now giving single window clearance now that would be fabulous manish if all our approvals comes in 3 months time we yep. save two years of interest right that would be fabulous and if we are able to unlock all of these reforms you will see churn of capital faster and the gdp growing of the country which will make huge difference to this country so sanjay what i heard as a very loud thumbs up initially 
towards the end of the dialogue, I do hear that it's actually a cautious, okay, you're doing well, but you could do better for the government. And that's an important one coming from you. So thank you so much for that. Let me move on to some tougher questions before we go on to some lighter side of the business. Uh, so, you know, Sanjay, a lot of times I talk to a lot of friends in real estate and one of the, one of the common uh, theory is this, that the corporates have never made it big in real estate and they will never will. Uh, and, and, and that, of course, includes you. Now, what is your real from the heart answer? I really want to know whatever bit you can answer. I know that you're, you're bound by your chair, but still, I mean, I keep hearing this entire thing and of course, and then if you see the results, yes, I mean, a lot of corporates are struggling to, 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 to make and keep their existence uh, in this sector. So does this sector actually belong to uh, the, the Lala and not belong to the corporate? No, Manish, the answer is no. Okay. Uh, but there's a little bit of truth in this question that you've asked. Uh -huh. You see, uh, real estate is a very local business. Right. So that's clear. You need to understand the laws of the state and the local uh, municipal corporation and bodies. If right. you don't know it, don't venture into business. Now, there was a time when a lot of local developers did that, but they made a mistake mm -hmm. of spreading themselves too thin. They wanted to become national developers. They, they even landed in Dubai and Malaysia and other parts of the country uh, in Asia region. So that was one challenge which came in the way. For corporates also, this was the same challenge. We spread ourselves too thin, not fully appreciating the local laws and environment and also the cultural traits of a buyer. The, the North Indian three bedroom wants 1800 square feet and a person in Mumbai wants 1100 square feet. There's a big difference. Sure. Right? So, so that was one challenge. The second thing was, which I think was in favor of corporates. Real estate development prior to RERA and many other years before that, the local developers could manage things. The, the, the famous uh, thing, I can manage. <laughs> uh, that has now seriously become a level playing field. Right. So there are no more influences on the state governments and the center. The governments are now treating everybody with the same yardstick. And that has made a level playing field. And after RERA, and the awareness on governments, uh, governance and compliance, environment, all those issues have made developers more corporate. So if the so tables have turned, Manish, if the local developers don't become corporate, they would not be around for too long. And, and you know, if you go back in 30 years of history, cannot place developers, are they big developers other than one in Delhi? You look at Nariman Point, the top developers who built Nariman Point, are they the top developers in Mumbai? Same goes for MG Road, Bangalore, same goes for MG Road, Pune, same goes for Anna Salai, Chennai, uh, or indeed uh, your, uh, you know, uh, Park Street in Calcutta. Things have changed. And I think the future belongs to corporates. And it is not necessary the corporates are only Tata's and Godrej or Mahindra. Any developer which corporatizes the organization is a corporate developer. Okay, got it. So, <laughs> you know, trust Sanjay to turn around the question into this one. So you're saying actually the others will, will have to question their own working. Um, interesting, interesting to say the least. Sanjay, I want to quickly come on to you in particular. How do you think your colleagues in this leadership position that you are, how do you think your colleagues or team members describe you? Are you, are you the big boss or are you the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man for them? Who are you? I'm a colleague, Manish. Mm -hmm. I'm not the boss. Okay. And uh, I consider myself a hands-on worker. And uh, right from the beginning, it has been uh, my wish uh, to stay closer to business and the domain. 
so I'm not the guy who will sit in the boardroom and do some fancy presentations and manage it that way. So I'm hands on. I would like to travel. I'd like to connect. I would like to meet the customers. Uh, so I'm more of a colleague. So you're not the you're the one you're not the one who'll manage the managers. I get that. At this note, let's actually hear it from a very senior colleague of yours. You don't know about this one, uh, so we are introducing this one to you. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a senior colleague of yours who said a few things about you. Let's hear that. Uh, can we bring it on, please? Hi, everyone. Uh, I've been doing Sanjay personally for almost a year's time now, and I can say he's not only dynamic, uh, but somebody who is back full of energy, uh, somebody who is very positive and who believes in spreading smiles around him. Uh, Sanjay, with his immense knowledge and exposure to the real estate industry, brings a lot to the organization. Uh, he has been somebody who has been very open to new ideas. Uh, I really admire one thing about him is his entire customer-centric approach, and uh, also he's very tech-savvy as a leader. Uh, on the leadership quotient, I can say that uh, he has always been motivating. Uh, he is somebody who has been very participative, and the best part is about knowledge sharing. Uh, which is something which he really inculcates in each and every individual in the organization itself. Uh, I can say one thing that uh, we are very lucky to have Sanjay as a leader, who not only believes in spreading smiles, but is also very humble. Thank you. Thank you, Sarthak. And yes, Sanjay. So it looks like you're that participative leader who who pushes from behind rather than leads only from ahead. That's that's great to hear. Coming to that, what are the three effective leadership principles that you think? Contributed to your success the most. I'm sorry, I'm throwing this suddenly, but any three no. or two or five, whatever you think, your I'm, success mantra I'm, as a leader. Knowledge cannot be replaced, Manish. Okay, it's critical. So knowledge is handled. Okay, absolutely. There is no shortcut to that. I I believe you need to genuinely have that intent to make a difference. Uh, so some would use the word passionate. Some would use some other expressions, so that's really important because if you're not driven, uh, and 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 I may take an, a minute on this, you know the world has been very difficult, Manish. Unless you make two times the effort, you will never got get the output that you did ten years ago. Okay. For everybody, not just for the CEO, for any person. So passion is extremely important. Knowledge is critical, and in addition to this, you can use various words. But something that has worked for me is focus. Okay. What is the end objective of the management of the shareholder? If you're not delivered on those, uh, we're not doing justice uh, to a leadership. So knowledge, focus, and passion. If I may say yes. or, or rephrase for you, right? Yes. Fantastic. Now, given all of these, and given uh, what we've just heard about you, who do you look up to in this industry? Is there somebody who you think is wow? I, I wish I was this, or I wish you know. I, I, no, I, there are a lot of people. Uh, you know, my first when I looked up to something was not a person; uh -huh. it was a statement, and that statement was, "People think, I act," and that kind the of money. that stayed with me. So yeah. it was nothing to do with the leadership. Mm -hmm. It was to do with the statement. Sure. So that was very something which stayed with me, and I believe in action. Uh, I'm assuming this is about Mr. Dhirubhai Ammani, right? Yes, yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I I also believe uh, you know a lot of your core values that you uh, build. Uh, that's family is the institution. Uh, that's where the values are built. So you know your Parents teach you that mm -hmm. uh, integrity, honesty, good intent, just being good citizen, right? Uh, I think that was really one foundation, which much later in my life I've realized that if you have the same genuine, open, transparent approach, uh, the person on the other side will know it. So, Sanjay, I'm I'm actually. Sorry, I'm I'm cutting you, but uh, I I was looking for those names in real estate which you look up to. You say, hey. Oh yes. Uh, yes. No. Uh, everybody knows uh, Mr. Deepak Parikh has been one of the front runners uh, for the industry. Right. Uh, 
you know, I've known uh, Mr. Niranjan Hirandani personally. Uh, you know, my first real estate boss was Anshuman Magazine, uh, you know, chairman for CBRE, South Asia, Africa, Middle East, uh, and all of that. Uh, so some of these leaders, and of course, there are many other uh, that have inspired me in real estate. And then, of course, the leaders outside of the space. So I can go on. Uh, at every stage, I found some inspiration. Uh, I get in that. But don't, because you already named somebody that who, who has actually spoken about you uh, for this segment. And let's bring okay. it on, please. Let's, let's hear what one stalwart has to say about the other. Sanjay has been a wonderful friend. But he started off with a professional relationship 20 years ago. He was in JLL and we did a lot of work together. Right from the beginning, he was ethical. He was correct and he guided me very well. I was relatively not so intelligent about the commercial leasing operations. And he gave me a lot of good advice and direction in it. When I thought small, he said, you must do big and create big flow plates on it. I always found him straight and honest. Over a period of years, I have developed a personal relationship with Sanjay. And that is something unique and beautiful. He is so empathetic, so truthful, so clear and so honest. I value his integrity and I think uh, him coming up into the Tata reality is that two ethical people, the Tata group and he meet together. So I think it's quite a good merger of that. But I value my friendship Sanjay. I value your professional expertise and advice that you've always been giving. I always keep learning from you. So wonderful Sanjay, congratulations, I wish you the Isn't it lovely to hear from a person you really like? Oh, you. Sanjay, I'm, I'm, glad. I'm grateful to you for putting this all together for me, uh, honestly. And how beautifully he spoke and I'm touched, really. You owe him a phone call after this, I guess. <laughs> but yes, I must also tell all the viewers and you, Sanjay, that he's also agreed, kindly consented to be one of, on one of the episodes coming shortly after yours. Oh, so you should. it's interesting yes. to, to have him there. And uh, maybe we can get you get to you to talk about him at that point in time. But let's see. Okay, going on. Um, I think I had a lot of questions which I want to skip because we are actually running out of time, which everybody warned me of, given that you have so much, so much to tell us, and we have so much to ask you. Uh, let's let's go on to the next section, uh, which I'm very very keen to quickly go on to. Uh, Sanjay, your father was in police. Yes. How did that make a difference in you? I mean, did it change you as a leader? Did it change you as a person? Let's address that as the first question on your job. Sure. Absolutely uh, hard work. I think policemen and women, uh, they work very long hours, sometimes broken duty. It's only hard work. And, and they do it with a lot of constraints. So I think that's one takeaway that I've got from him. Uh, absolute uh, hard work. Okay. Get that. Sanjay, on this hard work point, I would like to probably tell our audiences what I know and of course you know. Uh, you started very, very early working, right? I mean, you had to afford um, a, a lot, of, lot of bills and therefore you had to work while studying. Was it the 10th standard? 10th standard. I started, I, I'm, I feel very proud that I paid for my studies, tuitions, fees to the college, everything from 10th onwards. Wow, look at that. So much to learn. Yes, Sanjay. So from that 10th standard, little boy going out to earn his own living, his own tuition fee to today's, uh, you know, head of a large company. What do you think are the tenets of leadership that people need who are coming on from very modest, very humble, very basic backgrounds? Or is it not for them? I mean, is it is it very um, one in a million stars that comes out like you or or there are many? Manish, it's a very important point. I think it's always a discovery, even at this age. Leadership is not about you, Manish. Mm -hmm. Leadership is always about others. And, and I know I come across a lot of young people who say, let me take this leadership course. Let me go for this leadership program. And I think it's a waste. 
okay leadership is always about how to make your colleagues successful how to make your organization successful how to make a difference to your customers problems and challenges right if you go with a motive and objective and an agenda that's not leadership okay and i think the success is leadership if you have delivered results for your organization if you have built careers of your colleagues and people and they have become and if you make them leaders even more uh powerful mm -hmm. so i think that's very very important uh, leadership is always about others okay so let me let me ask another thing within this scope uh, so if you were a partner if you were to partner with a business entity or let's say a person you are interviewing for a key position what are those deal breakers for you where you say hey no whatever however good the person is this is the reason why i won't take him and of course i mean some of those are common like integrity etc let's leave them aside but besides that what is it that you're looking for or what you're not looking for in last 30 years of my career i've always worked for companies who are professional and they're high on governance ethics and integrity uh and therefore that has been a very simple goal uh, for me okay. and i think uh, if you do not have that then it can impact your personal life your moral values your principles they can get impacted and which is of course is a much larger purpose of you in life work is one thing but living holistically is a totally another and and i think that has been a simple uh, aim for me for any decision that i've made for joining an organization fair enough and i think that's a that's a great answer to get um uh, what drives you sanjay uh, the, it said that three things or one of the three things drive everybody who is at the top power glory money what is it for you quick answer short one at that i i think uh, joy if i can uh, the 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 feeling of accomplishing uh, drives me okay feeling of accomplishment it could be an accomplishment okay. for a colleague or a business or something that you have made a difference matters okay sanjay you you studied while you were working and then you studied more when you did your mba how much do you think your education or training prepare you for this role or did it come in the way of uh, your learning did education come in the way of your learning as as people will say you see somebody who has limited resources Mm -hmm. and still wants to spend on education that means the first chapter of learning you have already taken that okay. means you attach significance to learning sure and till date i have not stopped learning manish because that is the only learning to continue to learn is been my you know i thought a reason why i've been able to constantly evolve myself as a professional and uh, so that in in other words the education has prepared me it gives mm -hmm. you a direction okay but more importantly i think is the actual experiences on the job training and interacting with leaders of the industry or stakeholders so i feel very proud that uh, i have learned from my colleagues and i have learned from whoever i have interacted with uh, you know for example uh, you have not mentioned kushru jijina he had spiramal fund a fabulous uh, professional learned so much from him uh, i interact with some other leaders and within tata group there are so many leaders that you interact with so that has really been learning and investing in learning at the early stage of our life has been the biggest realization okay sanjay uh, at this note i think i'm guilty of asking you too many serious questions so far let's get to the lighter side of life so no. sanjay when you are when you are not working i believe you're designing jewelry you're <laughs> biking yes. you're an artist i saw your video applying mehndi to somebody and i hope that was your wife yes. i don't know which was 
It'll be interesting to know. Yes. But I, I see you as an artist. Who are you? Who is this real Sanjay? Is he an artist or is he the professional that we we see him like this? Who's All he? All professionals, Manish, need to be an artist. Uh -huh. So you know, you whether you're in boardroom, you need creative uh -huh. strategies in difficult times, and that creativity always works. Out of the box thinking, a lot of may say. I used to do a lot of sketching, and I stopped doing it when I uh, moved into the corporate world. And uh, once we got married, uh, uh, there was something in me was looking to come out of creative ideas, and it accidentally happened that I created something uh, for my wife. It was another design by a jeweler, and I modified a little. and it became a great success and my wife felt very nice uh i can go on record that i love more jewelry than my wife does mm -hmm. and uh, and since then uh her personality has inspired me to do some more creative pieces and Andre, do you know you're putting a lot of her husbands in trouble big yes, one at that you better because you're not looking after as much as uh, i have taken care <laughs> Okay, we'll get back to you on that one. One zero, we understand that. Okay, uh, Sanjay. So since we are talking about you, let's talk about somebody who probably is very close to you and feels very close to you, and show you a video of a friend of yours who doesn't stay here in the country, who stays outside, but he has said some wonderful words about you. We've just been able to source that. Can we play that, please? Uh, hi, my name is Shankar. I am. Um... Friend of Sanjay's, and uh, we knew each other for 35 years. Uh, we met uh, in 1985. Um, uh, we like the true Langoti IR. So the reason is, uh, I remember we used to go to the local Akhara, uh, actually um, uh, with the Langot in those days, and to do our our exercise. Um, so <laughs> it, it it was pretty amazing, and uh, uh, we grew up in in uh, West Delhi. Uh, Come from a humble family, um, and uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm really proud of Sanjay's uh, successes so far. Uh, I know how hard working he's uh, you know, throughout his life, and you know the way he did his MBA, um, the way he started his first startup uh, in Delhi, and then uh, and then finally moved to moved to uh, Mumbai to do uh, uh, be in the reality industry. And how he how he climbed up the ladder, and one of the key thing about Sanjay is integrity. He's just, uh, you know honesty, integrity, hard work, and I think uh, we I would say for both of us we inculcated from our our uh, humble beginning and, and parents uh, in, you know, who taught us how to how to be be um, what I would call it is uh, work hard and. Uh, Do the right things, and that's that's the key thing, right? Um, um, he he was a I would I mean the, in the in imbalance. Oh, um, he, uh, as a brother, he gave away uh, my wife uh, in my wedding, uh, and nowadays when we met, we uh, we try to meet at least once a year, um, wherever wherever we are in the world, and we end up catching up at least uh, for dinner. I think the last week caught up is in New York um, for a dinner with a couple of our friends. Um, it's uh, it's amazing to see uh, Sanjay's success, and I always wish him well. Uh, is uh, is my best buddy. All right, all the best, Sanjay. Fond memories of Shankar. Oh, very fond, truly Langotia Yar. I actually yeah, looks like his wife Jasmine. I did the kanya dan for her, so I'm technically her father. Wow, <laughs> uh, she's a singer. Would be better off. You don't look that <laughs> age, but yeah, okay, fine. Uh, yes. So, so Sanjay, another one. So, akhara as well, pehlwani or kushti? What was it? Well, well, I I did power exercises, so I did uh -huh. more those uh, you know akhara style. Uh, so the indigenous gym. Uh, yes, and and rope climbing, parallel bars, push-ups, and some. you know some weights but uh, more towards athletic side than actual muscle not bad
Sanjay, in fact, you know, that was my other question. How do you manage so many personalities within you? You're a Gemini, I know that. Uh, uh, Mid-June born and, and a belated, a happy belated birthday to you, which went just a few days ago. But, um, and, and, and you definitely don't look your age. So what is it? Who are you? Again, asking that question. Who are you? Are you, are you somebody else in somebody else's cloak? No, what's, no. What's all of this? It's, it's, it's just me. I, I genuinely believe um, uh, family, friends, colleagues, they, they, they influence you a lot. So whatever mm -hmm. I am, I'm thanks to all of my friends that you, you know, played on the screen and the ones who are outside. Uh, that's what I am. Okay, I have more of those personal questions where you can't actually duck those ones <laughs> coming up later in the round five. But oh. before that, let's now move on to what we call the section three of our talk. They are called, this round is called FNF Connections, which stands for family and friends. So since you are designing jewelry for your wife and you've already put us into a trouble with ours, let's, let's discuss this part as well. Okay, uh, Sanjay, 24 years since you've been married. How did you meet your wife? Uh, Pankaj, her name is, am I right? Yes. yes. Yeah. How did you meet her and what's the story since then? Tell us the love story. And we fell in love immediately after we met. And uh -huh. since then, we've been blessed with two children and the love is growing uh, and maturing. Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, she's, when she watches me, I'll get some brownie points there. Uh, she's been an inspiration as well. Uh, I think... Uh, you know, women generally are gifted uh, for being very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. They're just naturally gifted. And I think that's what I got from her. She made sure that our kids remain grounded. And, and, and I think uh, she's also been a great mother to them. Uh, she single-handedly managed uh, both the kids without any help. I'm also very proud to say that my children have taken no tuition in their life ever. Wow, they've lovely. On their own. Uh, they've managed everything on their own. So I feel very proud about that. And I think uh, my wife has played, Pankaj has played a very important role there. And, and she's made me also very pragmatic and practical. So was this uh, meeting arranged or did it happen like the DDLJ style somewhere no, in Punjab? It was, it was family uh, introducing family. Aha. Uh -huh. The nice proper boy method. Okay, great. Um, I didn't get any juicy stories yet. Maybe <laughs> a little later, maybe in the second round, we will get something out there. Uh, since you talked about your kids, we thought we'll show you what your kids have to say about you, the lovely daddy. Let's bring it on. The video, please. From where to begin? He's just not a dad, but he's a Netflix chill by DA. Teaching a teacher, teaching us new skills every day, and occasionally a professor lectures me too much. So, as we all know, he's not only a real estate guy, but he is also a navigator guiding us through all the new challenges and opportunities that we get in our life. He is also a adventurous friend of ours who helps us to discover new places and enjoys every moment of new architecture that we see around the world. We also like how how easy it is to uh, share our troubles with him and uh, hoping that he will give us a solution. And it, it helps us to grow personally and professionally uh, such as such as uh, me starting my career into real estate simultaneously pursuing my interest in law and fashion and uh, race car driving and scuba diving and many more to list. And for this, we, we thank, thank him for, for all the support, support and, and guidance. guidance. We wish him all the, all best. the best. Thank you. It was cute, wasn't it? Especially the ending. <laughs> cute. Wonderful. So they, must have, they must have really done a lot of takes to put that together. <laughs> I, I, I believe they're as gifted as you are, or maybe more, touch wood. Um, but good to hear children talk uh, such great stuff about their daddy who's actually busy so much outside. How do you manage this? I mean, this is my last question on this part of it, and I have others to ask. But two things I want to know how you managed. One is a very simple one. With a name that you share with such a known actor of our times, yes. um, 
I am sure a lot of ups and downs happened in his life. So, did it impact you? I mean, did you did you did you get to become a first favorite of your wife first because your your name was Sanjay Dutt? Uh, no, I, I think my name obviously was given when the 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 actor did not come into the limelight. Um, but I've had some very embarrassing moments uh, at hotels when I got upgrades at airlines when I've got business upgrades because they thought I'm the actor. So <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I have some very embarrassing moments even on the digital platform. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, no. Not so much. Otherwise, that, girls following you, thinking you're the Sanjay Dutt from the well, other side. Well, you know, in, once in uh, Singapore Airlines, uh, yeah. I was taking my seat when two girls came rushing that you can't sit here. And I uh -huh. said, why? No, this seat is reserved for Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay Dutt. And I said, really? So I gave my card and I said, yes, sorry. We thought Sanjay Dutt, the actor. <laughs> So it happens like that. Wonderful. So that was that was one part, uh, which which probably uh, you know I want to talk about whether you got any incidents where you 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 were taken or mistaken as the Sanjay Dutt. The other was um, as well in Delhi. It happened once. An announcement was made for me, uh -huh. but the real actor was also present. Wow. <laughs> and ended up going twice uh, to to meet who was making the announcement. Eventually, I had to get up and go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever meet him, Flesh and Blood? Uh, yes, uh, but it was a very short moment. Yeah. So what, what was the meeting like, hey, this is Sanjay Dad, and you say, me too. <laughs> uh, no, we didn't today? get to spend that much time. Yes, it was yeah, more yeah. like a gesture. OK, wonderful. So I'm going to move, move from here, how much I want to ask you so many questions, actually. Uh, but I'm going to move and, and come to you in those rapid fire rounds later. But First, shall we now at this moment um, go to the audience questions? I think uh, we are running out of time, so we let's have let's have just two of them, the best two possible, a quick ones with quick answers. Open house, sure. ladies and gentlemen, for you, your questions and your hero answering those questions. Can we have them, Farhan? Farhan is the CEO of Play and is uh, coordinating on this one. He's also the executive producer of this show. Thank you, Manish. Uh, thank you, Sanjay, sir, for agreeing and coming on board with us uh, today. In fact, there are a lot of questions that we have flowing in on all different other platforms, including Facebook and here also. There are a lot of questions. There are a few that I uh, I really want to ask myself as well. Uh, mm. There's one question uh, from... The, so, Pran, before you ask the question, just to for everybody to know, your questions will be given to Sanjay. We will put them back on Facebook, the answers, whatever bit he, he, he chooses to answer later. So even if they're not answered right now, they will be answered hopefully later. Yes, Pran, please go ahead. Uh, there's a question from Ankita on Facebook. She says, if given a chance and funding of 100 million, which segment would you start your new business except real estate? Oh, which segment? Digital platform. Absolutely. Uh, what are you guys doing, for example? I need to make sure that that money is well spent. And I think even uh, uh, globally, this is a trend. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree quite a bit. In fact, um, dot wise, our digital arm should be happy to hear yes. this one. Uh, digital it is. And, 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 and I guess coming from the horse's mouth out there who, uh, who understands and, and sources the right opportunities all the time for his clients. Okay, great. Fantastic. Any other question? Yes. Quick There's another nice. one which is uh, more uh, you know, on an organization level, which says, we find it challenging to identify and fill the right talent at mid senior levels. Do you have the same challenges? If yes, what do you feel is a long term solution to this? Who has asked this question, Farhan? Could you please name the person? Is that possible? Sorry, it's anonymous. I don't have the name of the person. Oh. Okay. I think it's a very good question. Uh, talent is always there in everybody, it's the right fitment which is important. So, Organizations go through various changes every now and then. And the challenge for the CEO is to ensure that we actually present the right opportunity to the right person so that that person can benefit. Uh, so a lot of things are done. You, there are certain jobs that you can actually coach and train. Certain skills you need to probably bring into the organization from outside. Uh, and some of the things you can never teach. You have to 
Uh, and I'm glad that that way Tata Group has Tata Administrative Services, Tata Business Excellence Group, Tata, you know, synergies between all Tata companies, giving us access uh, and access to our people to explore opportunities. Okay. Uh, do you want to take one more for Anne or shall I move on? No, I want to, you know, there's, there's one, one very interesting question that I would like to take. Let's uh, go. Let's go. If Bollywood made a movie about your life, who would you like to see cast you as, as you? The Sanju film had Ranveer Kapoor. You love Ranveer to, to play you? Well, he's already played Sanju, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so that will be a sequel, Sanjay Dutt 2. Fantastic. Got it. Thank you so much, Sanjay, on this part of it. And we move on to the fifth round. And before I move on to the fifth round, sorry, I had a question. Yes. What is Sanjay Dutt? And this is, a, this is a hypothetical question, but I want you to answer it with all honesty you can. What will Sanjay Dutt as a leader and a husband behave in this situation? A last minute presentation is scheduled with Tata Sense board members, let's say. And it happens to be your wedding anniversary on the same day. Oh. Let's say a big one, a 25th oh. one, okay? Oh. Which is coming up any which way. On the same day. And you've planned an entire day out with your wife, booked the tickets. I mean, booking the tickets is not a big thing, but you promised it to her. You told the kids to take care of the house, etc. And you're going out with her. What will you do? Take wife to the presentation. <laughs> I'm not too sure Tata Sons will be very he, happy about this. He part. has been uh, very supportive. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and that's why I was able to do things uh, and learn and therefore accomplish something in life. And if it wasn't for her, I would not have done that. Uh, and I think everybody in the real estate industry knows Friday evening onwards, if anybody wants to meet for business, uh -huh. my family is with me. Okay, that's not bad at all. People invite me, they have to call my family for the business meet. Sanjay, you're getting dangerous for all of us, man. <laughs> this is not done. You're getting dangerous. You're going to get us into trouble. I promise you that. Farhan and I are definitely in trouble. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go with the section five and the last section for today uh, before we wrap up. And I know that it's going to extend a little more than one hour, but not too much. Uh, 20 questions for you. Uh, we, we, we hope that in this rapid cross conversations you're able to answer us with all honesty and what all truth as much as possible. Sanjay, yeah. shall we go? Are you ready? Yes. Yeah, fantastic. So we, we fire these questions at you initially easy and then later difficult. Question number one. Sanjay Dutt, tea or coffee? Tea. Tea for you. Who would you rather be irritable with and get away? Kids or wife? Kids. Okay. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Uh -huh. Delhi or Mumbai, your favorite city? Ah, oh, both. Um, so you yes. take a stand. I'm a Delhiite still. Okay, so Delhi it is. Read or watch? Watch. Watch. Bike or car? Car, but used to be a biker. Uh -huh. Work from home or work from office? What's your work preference? from office is work from home. Okay. Web series or movies? Movies. Okay. Tata Reality or Fast Forward? Fast Forward is the first company just for the others to tell who, who uh, you know, that company you founded. So what's, what's the last love? Is it the first love or is it the last one? I, the, whenever you changing, whenever you bringing change to an organization or whenever you doing new things, it is a startup. And that's for me is fast forward. Fast forward it is. Okay. Bollywood or Hollywood? Hollywood. Hollywood it is. Outcome or efforts? Uh, Without outcome, the efforts are of no use. So what are we choosing? Outcome. Outcome? Okay. Okay, this is a difficult one. I would hate to answer this one. Eshwarya, your daughter, or Amish, your son, your first among sequels. First among sequels? What's the question? The question is who? You should choose one right now. Here. No explanation. Oh, oh. Oh. Fathers always have love for the daughters. Ah, Amish, you and I have enough to talk about. I got <laughs> in there. Okay. Uh, old Hindi, Hindi melodies or new age beats? 
Hindi old melodies. It is okay. At least something that tells us that you're not as young as you look. Great. <laughs> Your favorite heroine. Favorite heroine. Ah. Well, at one time, so it Ashwarya Rai. That's why we kept our daughter's name. Oh, it's coming from there. Not bad. Not bad at all. JLL or Kushman? Kushman. Kushman. Stuck on an island during lockdown, ideally with wife, friends, or colleagues. Uh, having spent uh, four months of COVID, friends. Friends, I got you again there. Good one. Very good. <laughs> at least we get an equal there. Your best boss ever. Oh, um, actually, uh, even my current boss, Mr. Banmali Agarwal, is a wonderful human being. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm here because of him, uh, honestly speaking. Uh, but I was always lucky. Uh, even my first boss was Anshuman Magazine in real estate. And even today, we are friends. So that will always be special. Uh, for Fantastic. Me. I share that fortune with you. I have a lot of lot of bosses who've been amazing, and thank God for them. I'll move on to the last question. Yeah, I sorry. should share with you. I work yeah. for three consulting firms: uh -huh. CPRD, Cushman and Wakefield, JLL. Yeah. JLL. I work Cushman Wakefield the longest. That's why Cushman I chose in the earlier question. But uh, all of these organizations, we're still thick friends. So. I was probably the only CEO who moved between these companies and still had good relationships because the, the personal, uh, you know, respect for each other was very high. Okay. And with that, I move on to the last question of the day before we move on to the other things in life, entrepreneurship or professional intrapreneurship. Entrepreneurship as you started, or the way you are today, professional? Uh, no, professional entrepreneurship. Uh, and I tell you why. The entrepreneurship is generally regarded as, you know, quick off the foot and decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, in the corporate world, and in, especially in the new world order, you need to be very mindful of compliance and governance and sensitivities involved. Sensitivities towards people, sensitivities towards business, and therefore uh, there are a lot more protocols uh, than you would like to see as an entrepreneur. Right. So, you know, uh, Devdat Patnayak has given many lectures on Western style of management and uh, Hindu mythology based Indian style of management, and they both have pros and cons. But when you build a large scale business, you have to institutionalize the business. Right. That's why I chose the answer. Okay. Scale, I guess, is what you're heading towards. And I guess you're in the right place for that, for sure. Sanjay, uh, with that, we come to the end of this round. But I have to ask you, any last parting shot for a lot of people who are listening right now, who are viewing this, on how to navigate their life in this time of adversity? If something that you would like to leave behind, because a lot of us are not hand to mouth, of course not. But we're all wondering whether, whether what's the future from here. Uh, may, maybe some of us are not also as well as we used to be in our mind. What, what do you want to leave behind for all of us who are entrepreneurs, who are entrepreneurs? Manish, I want to leave two messages behind. One, okay. uh, there is always an upside from the downside. And I've seen it and I can see it even today. Instead of worrying too much, and I mentioned earlier, think, people think, I act was a statement which inspired me. Don't right. think too much. Act if you believe that you confronted with challenges. Got it. And second uh, thought I want to leave behind is something I learned in my childhood when I was 20 years old and I used to do a lot of sketches, I told you. I did, uh, I came across uh, an exhibition in which I participated. It was organized by Help Age India in Delhi. 
and i took my sketches seven or eight of them large pieces and i displayed it mm-hmm. and i got to learn about helpage india as a organization uh, i was so touched because i was so young at that time that there is a organization which is thinking of old people and i i was just amazed so i went to uh, and i realized that they do lot of charity events and they fund so i took all my artwork to their connaught place office the first chairman of helpage india one sick gentleman and i said i want to gift all these as my little contribution so obviously i was too young so the gentleman said you know you look to be too young to making any contribution at this time mm-hmm. and he said should i tell you one thing and this message is very valuable he said you promise me that the only thing that you want to do for me is that you take care of your parents wow. because if you take care of your parents mm-hmm. if you are a good citizen and if all of us are a good citizen the world will be a better place and i was too young you know at that point of time for me it just stayed it was in a moment for me and i just can not forget and therefore and you know now we are parents we know you know how the emotions run so if you're not taking care of your parents uh that's the most injustice irrespective of your professional uh growth irrespective of your fame glory is of no use if you're not taking care of your parents this what i can completely identify with sanjay and i would have loved to ask you more questions on this particular one but i think we're running out of time seriously running out of time i want to before we end up and before we come to the closure wanted to thank mr ajay chaturvedi in accommodation time for having promoted uh, this on his various channels so much thank you so much ajay ji uh, and with this uh, ladies and gentlemen we come to an end of a brilliant teet teet with sanjay our second guest on play dialogues uh, we have ha- we we have some very wonderful industry top names coming up in weeks to come one of uh, one of them i already told you about niranjan hinandani dr niranjan hinandani is going to be here with us in a few weeks and i'm proud to announce that we shall have mr baman irani of rustam ji group as our next guest on the next saturday which is the coming saturday at 4 o'clock for those of you who know baman would know that what a brilliant speaker what a thoughtful mind and a wonderful human being he is so join us again next week with him for now let's say a bye to our lovely guest mr sanjay dat mr sanjay dat thank you thank so you much so for much. having joined us lovely meeting you on the forum your time and, and thank you for taking time for us and at this stage let me also thank my colleagues who have put this together sanjay uh, the brilliant team who has been kind of bothering you for a while now uh, may i introduce the team uh, to everybody thank you farhan upasna anandita mandar of course rishi who has been putting this together all all on his head kalpesh rohan suyash and ekta the wonderful team that i have i get to see all the camera lights and they get to get to do all the good work that they do with that we come to an end of this episode please see the signature off and we are really hoping to see you back in the next episode including you sanjay listening thank to aman thank you so much again bye bye bye